So, good morning everybody. Now that the days are finally getting colder in this chilly November month, there's only one thing on my mind, and that's Easter. Now, this Easter, I'm going to be making one of my favorite egg dishes, the ultimate cheesy egg bowls. Now, I chose this dish because it's quick and easy to make with total prep time and cook time being less than 30 minutes. It's budget friendly with the total cost being under $1.27 per serving. It's packed full of vitamins and nutrients with only 75 calories per serving, and they're just extremely delicious. Now, I love cooking with eggs because they are so versatile. They can have the starring role, like in my dish, or they can be the magic ingredient that gives souffles or fluff. Eggs can be scrambled, fried, poached, and boiled, and they can be also be used to thicken, bind, glaze, or garnish. Now, eggs are also packed full of vitamins and nutrients. One egg has only 75 calories, but seven grams of high quality protein. Um, eggs contain iron, potassium, calcium, and are one of the only naturally occurring sources of vitamin D. All right, so now onto our dish. Now I went ahead and just pre-made our puff pastry by taking a store-bought puff pastry and flattening it out. I then took a large cookie cutter and cut out four circles in the dough. Then I took a smaller cookie cutter and made little indentations in the center of that dough. Then I just took a fork and poked three fork holes in the center of that circle. And then I popped them in the oven for about eight minutes at 400 degrees. All right, so after your uh, puff pastries are done cooking, you're just gonna remove it from the oven. And with a spoon, you're just gonna press down in the center of that dough to create sort of like a bowl shape. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure the sides of the bowl are completely level so that when you crack your egg, it won't spill out and mess up your pan. Now, um, for this dish, I'm gonna be using four US grade double A eggs. Now, when grading eggs, both the interior and exterior quality is measured. Interior uh, grating is measured by a process called candling, which is basically where you take an egg and hold it up to a strong light source to check the inner contents of that egg. Now, interior grating is determined by the size of the air sac, the quality of the albumin and yolk, and if there are any meat or blood spots present inside that egg. Now, exterior grating is determined by the quality of the shell as indicated by the cracks, stains, or irregular shapes that may be on that shell. They are then labeled as grade double A, grade A, and grade B eggs. Now grade double A eggs are nearly perfect with the egg whites being thick and firm and the yolks are free from any defect. Now grade A eggs are just a slightly lower in, uh, interior quality than grade double A eggs. So just little tiny meat or blood spots could be present inside that egg or the air sac is just a little bit misshapen. Now grade B eggs are noticeably different and they are not allowed to be sold in supermarkets and they are instead sent off to breaker plants where they are made into commercially powdered egg products. Now eggs are then labeled by size for the purpose of sales. Now size is based on weight per dozen and, egg, and based on weight eggs are labeled as peewee, small, medium, large, extra large, and jumbo. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how to properly crack an egg now. So what you're going to want to do is take a bowl, take an egg, and then take the back of a butter knife and lightly tap in the center of that egg, going almost all the way around. And then you're just going to stick your fingers in there and crack the egg. Now, to discard of the shells, you're going to scoop up one half of the shell with the other and then just dispose. Now, if I was in a regular kitchen setting, I would be using soap and water to wash my hands, but since I'm here, I'm just going to be using some hand sanitizer. Okay, so after you've cracked your egg, what you're going to do is just pour it into your cup, making sure it doesn't spill on your pan. All right, so then you're just going to discard your bowls. And, yep. So after that, you're just going to add cheese, and you're just going to sprinkle a little bit on there, but you could use whatever kind you like. Just a little bit in there. And then you're just going to add salt and pepper to taste. So if your eggs drip out, accidentally drip out of their pastry, that's completely fine because they're going to go through a process called coagulation once they go in the oven, which means they're just going to become a solid substance when heated, and then you can just scrape it off before serving. Now, speaking of coagulation, I find the functional properties of eggs to be extremely fascinating. Um, like in my dish, coagulation, eggs change from a liquid state to a more solid state when heating. In aeration, a whisked air bubble traps an egg to give it a light and fluffy texture. Now, emulsification allows for the mixing of ingredients that don't normally go together, like oil and water or mayonnaise. 
Now, the coloring of an egg can contribute to its, the color of baked goods through a chemical called xanthophyll, which can be found in the yolk of the egg. Now, eggs themselves possess a mild, bland flavor, but with the assist of flavor release from other ingredients in a formulation, this allows an egg to have the fluffy and creamy texture we've all come to love. Now, eggs, especially the egg whites, can be used to clarify or make various uh, fluid products clear. An example of this can include broth or wine. So now that our eggs are nicely in their cup, this is a good time to talk about food safety. When cooking with any food in its raw form, it is very, very important that you wash your hands and sanitize your work surfaces often. You never want to reuse utensils or bowls that you use for raw eggs without properly washing and sanitizing them first. By doing this, you prevent cross-contamination, which can cause you to become ill. All right, speaking of egg safety, there's some certain guidelines we need to follow when preparing egg and egg-related dishes. Now you always want to cook whole eggs until the egg white and egg yolk are completely firm. You want to cook egg containing dishes to an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to cook scrambled eggs till there's no liquid remaining. You never want to leave eggs or egg containing dishes at room temperature for longer than an hour. You want to hold cold egg dishes at a temperature above, uh, below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And you want to hold hot egg dishes at a temperature above 140 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so now that our eggs have finished cooking, you're just gonna remove them from the oven and place them on a serving tray. And here is mine. Okay. Now, this is a great dish to serve straight out of the oven, but you could always prepare it ahead of time and store it in an airtight container for up to a month. Now, speaking of storing, egg storage is very, very important and you always wanna know how you store your eggs. Now, raw eggs should be stored in their original carton, which helps protect the eggs, and it prevents eggs from absorbing the odor and flavor of any surrounding food that may be in the fridge. You also want to make sure that the best by date is always visible to guarantee freshness, and eggs should also be stored in the body of the refrigerator and never the door. This helps keep the eggs keep a consistent and cool temperature. Now, in closing, I'm going to be talking about the United States poultry industry. Now, per capita consumption as of May 2018 was about 276.3 eggs. Now, that's about five eggs eaten a day and 35 eggs eaten a week. Now, over 92 billion eggs have been produced in the United States in only 2017 alone. And as of October 1st, 2018, the average flock size of laying hens in the United States was about 325 million. Now, Iowa is also the leading state in egg production, caring for nearly 55 million laying hens and producing nearly 16 billion eggs per year. All right, and finally, our finished product, the ultimate cheesy egg bowl. I hope you enjoy. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share my dish and my love of eggs with you. Now, did the judges have any questions? Are there any hormones in egg production? Unless you're talking about the normal hormones that they produce naturally, then there are not any used in their feed or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you.